Bless the Lord, oh my soul, bless it. Hi, thanks for tuning in to Armor of God. As always, let me start by saying thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us, and hopefully you'll learn something useful for your own spiritual warfare. To kick off this video, I'd like to share something rather disgusting from Father Carlos Martins. Don't take it the wrong way, but please listen for a moment. Actually, this is Father Martins' answer when he was asked whether is it possible for people to be possessed and never know it. Um, so what they will know is that there is part of their being that is not free in ways that it is free in others. Uh, so I've had more than one case where um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of an individual, uh, he was absolutely possessed and he didn't know it. And even when the evidence, when I presented the evidence to him, uh, he, he acknowledged the truth of everything that I presented, but he said, well, if I were possessed, then I should be experiencing a clash within me against the devil. And, and I said to him, well, that's the point. You, the behaviors that you're doing, you love. Why would there be a clash if you and the devil have the same goals? Uh, and so he went away and still nevertheless didn't believe. Now, whether he was being fully honest with me is another question. But in so far, I do remember uh, confronting him with this. And the reaction from him was such that, you know, I just, uh, I, I'm just not buying it. Uh, so there's a case where I believe he genuinely didn't know. So most people know uh, they what they they find themselves they find they do find an inner clash they'll find themselves depending upon the demon most demons uh, will act in a particular way such that they will make they will enjoy making you do things that you would ordinarily not do so uh, among other things for example you may. Uh, have a, a penchant for an uh, like a, a kind of sin that is a grotesque aberration of what you normally enjoy, uh, something terribly perverted that you've never had before in your life. Uh, there could be, uh, there will be typically blackout periods where you're sitting in your living room, for example, it's Tuesday afternoon, uh, and all of a sudden it's now Friday morning, you wake up, on a, in a different part of town and you have no idea what has happened in the intervening time. It's a complete blackout. It's not available to your memory at all. And so uh, now you may find yourself in one of these blackout periods um, e e eating feces out of a public toilet. I, I mean, the demon will make it, the demon enjoys making his victim do things like this, right? And then and then disappearing midway through the action or recessing so that the victim experiences himself doing this action. Wait a minute, how did I get here? What, why am I doing this? What? So that kind of thing is a delight to the demon. Father Gabriel Amorth, we're all quite familiar with the name of this man. In fact, according to Father Martins, Father Amorth would have been a great politician if he had not become a priest. You know, Father Amorth was a man of many talents, in particular communication, a great serious man of the church with um, a, a, a propensity for building relationships. And in that capacity, he was able to form some astounding connections uh, with between the church and secular authorities. But even within the church, uh, he was able to forge some very powerful relationships and, 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 and for the good of the church, for the good of God and, and the pr promulgation of the kingdom. Now, now, he had already started this when he worked in the political realm prior to joining the seminary. And, and if he had chosen to, he could have had a very promising career in Italian politics. And did you know that in his book, An Exorcist explains the demonic Father Amorth wrote that the demonic disturbances that torment individuals called diabolical obsession can lead to confusion about one's gender, particularly in the young. Many of the devil's ordinary temptations are passed off as modern ideas, but really serve to unhinge the principles of the faith. And these include abortion, same-sex marriage, euthanasia, divorce, and cohabitation. The loss of a sense of sin that characterizes our era helps the devil to act nearly undisturbed and inducing man to sin, takes man progressively away from the love of God. 
Suggestions like everyone does it applied to grave sins weaken the consciences of men and women and lead them toward closing their hearts, egoism, lack of forgiveness, and doing everything for money, power, and sex. But everything that seduces and enslaves souls leads to their death, which is the devil's objective. Think of, think of a drug addict, uh, somebody who is not in control of himself, but who retains a whole lot uh, of, of his natural powers. Uh, they may a drug addict may surprise you how quickly he's able to leap over a fence and come at you. Uh, I mean, we're in, in such a manner that even if he didn't have any drugs in his he may not be able to do it. But the drugs provide a kind of added uh, dimension to that. Uh, at the same time, an addict is uh, cares about nothing but the substance of his addiction. All right? So in the demons, the, the, the pride is there is 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 the addictive element. Uh, it's what they kind of, quote unquote, begin their day with, and it's what they end their day with. And so that pride is, is and flexing it, living out of it, uh, impressing it upon you and, and trying to control you with it. Uh, th that is the motive of their acting. That, that's, that's how they, they, they kind of get their thrills, if you will. Uh, so you come against that pride and you show that you have no fear of it, that you show that, look, Look, you, I, I know, I know that you've already lost. You, you've lost to Jesus Christ, uh, though, though you are already the loser in the great, in the great war. Uh, not every battle is yet fought, but the war is, is done and over. We know the winner of it. Uh, so you come in with that attitude and you've now eliminated nine tenths of what is under the belt, so to speak, of, of a demon. Even though the devil's promises of money, pleasure, and power seem alluring, they actually come at a terrible price and don't allow those who choose them any peace. The principle of total personal liberty, the promise of no obligation to anyone, and the denial that all truth comes directly from God are seductive in appearance but ultimately unfulfilling, especially for young people. These notions delude people into thinking that life is a beautiful holiday where everything is permitted and where you do not recognize any limits regarding pleasure or enjoyment. And this is all because the devil wishes to lead people away from God. Other ways that the devil infects and attacks the modern culture are certain types of music, which can provoke violence, suicide, sexual perversion, and acts of destruction against the state, the civic order, and the church of God, and games like Ouija boards. Families are among the most targeted by the ordinary action of the devil, and therefore to counter this, he recommended all married couples pray together and extend the habit of prayer to their children. And here's another interesting to know about Father Morth, of how he used to belittle the demons during exorcisms. And here's why. You know, he had a, he, he was a very serious person with a profound sense of humor. Uh, Father Morth was, I mean, I, I don't know that he would do that in life uh, against the devil. However, an exorcist may antagonize the devil, belittle him. Um, in this, why would he do that? Well, because essentially the the, the spine of 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 the devil, the the spine of a demon, is his pride, uh, and so he he has to make himself big through illusion. Because at the end of the day, he's nothing. I mean, he's he's an entity with no future. Uh, his rebellion against God was an eternal choice. Uh, his nature, the nature of an angel, prevents repentance of a decision not because uh it's it's too it's too uh, not not because uh, god is cruel it wouldn't accept their repentance but angels choose differently than we choose than humans choose uh, we can come to a point where we think better of a decision that we've made and we think you know good gosh i've made a mistake i regret having done that and then we 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 turn Right? We, there, there's a metanoia within ourselves, a, a turning of the mind. The minds of angels are such that when they make a choice, they're making it not as a human, not from a limited point of view like we have. They're making a decision from an eternal point of view. So that, that they're, I'll, I'll phrase it this way, they're much more closer, they're, they're, they're more close to God in their power than they are to us. So it's they, they, their choice 
it has eternal ramifications. They're incapable of repenting from their choice. Right? So that being said, they have no future. And an exorcist may establish immediately in an encounter, if he chooses, if he thinks, if he deems it necessary, a belittling of the demon that he's got in front of him. And that's going to go directly against the image that that demon is trying to build and establish. Well, that is all for the video this time. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us and for your continuous support. And don't forget if there's any feedback or suggestions, please let me know down in the comments below. Anyway, for those of you who'd like to support our works, I left the link to our PayPal donation in the description box below. And from the bottom of my heart, I would like to thank all of you in advance for your contributions, supports, and prayers. And now until the next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and God bless you.